Keyloggers were found in WordPress and HP, mobile apps have all sorts of vulnerabilities, and Uber is hiding behind bug bounties. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for December 12, 2017, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Our Patreon is over at patreon.com slash threatwire, and that is still the best way to support the show and will help us reach our next goal. And now, on to the news. The first being keyloggers. So a keylogger was found on HP laptops and publicly disclosed last week by security researcher Michael Ming, who goes by ZW Close on the internet. Ming states in his blog, explaining the keylogger, that he found it by taking a look at the keyboard driver software called SynTP.SYS, or SYS, where he discovered a format string that looked eerily like a keyboard logger. After analyzing his findings, Ming noticed that the logger would save data to a trace file if turned on. It's actually a debugger that's used through Windows Software Trace Preprocessor, or WPP for short. He reached out to HP and HP responded quite quickly with an updated driver without the trace message, which also lowered the size of the driver. The update is available through HP's site and via Windows Update, and the virus total and HP links are available in the show notes right down below. The keylogger is off by default, but if a computer was struck with malware, for example, the malware could be written in a way that takes advantage of the known bug and enables it to send keyboard logs to a third-party attacker. Now, this could include anything that you type into a computer, so that could be your passwords, your credit card numbers, a lot more. <laughs> the Synaptics driver that had the bug comes pre-installed on over 460 HP laptops. Now, when HP responded, they stated that the logger was a debug trace that was left in the driver code accidentally, and a third party would need admin privileges to take advantage of it. Of course, this would not be hard if the computer was already infected with malware or an attacker had physical access. Now, on another note about keyboard loggers, Michael on Patreon and BTW, if you are one of our patrons, you can always send in your favorite stories on the community tab. So Michael on Patreon sent in a leak about WordPress. Securei discovered the WordPress keylogger while working the research on crypto miners that I spoke about a few weeks ago in a related story. They discovered that over 5,000 WordPress sites have malware infections that use fake Cloudflare domains in a script that exploits the function.php file that WordPress WordPress themes used to operate. The keylogger steals login credentials for WordPress sites and could also be used on retail and business platforms to steal credit card information from visitors. Now, if you run a WordPress site, Security recommends removing the add.js scripts function from your site's code and changing the login credentials for your administrative access. Google just patched a ton of vulnerabilities for their Android devices, so if you own one and you have an update available, make sure to hit update and restart your phone. One of the biggest vulnerabilities that they patched was first disclosed way back in July by Eric LaFortune of GuardSquare. The vulnerability is called Janus with CVE 2017-13156, and it was publicly disclosed to everybody on Thursday and now included in the December Android Security Bulletin and update. Now, if used in the wild, the attacker could gain root privileges on an Android device by circumventing anti-malware applications or detection, and they would sign their application to look like a trusted publisher. Janus can work because APK files and DEX files can have extra bytes added to their code. APK files because they are archives basically where the publisher signature is only verified by taking into account the archives bits, not any extra bits of data that are included, and DEX files can automatically contain extra data by default. Now defined, DEXs or Dalvik executable files are pretty much the sum of an app's code and that code is zipped up into that APK APK archive file, which is what you would download whenever you download an application from the Google Play Store or any other application store. However, not all applications work this way, but by default many do. Now since the verified signature could be compromised, a user could download the malicious application and think that it's just their normal banking, social media, calendar, or whatever application that they're using. And then they would log in and their data would end up being stolen. The escalated privileges would allow an attacker to steal other data from the phone as well or install malicious code. Now this affects older Android models, Nougat 7.0 and older to be specific. If you have received an update after July of 2016, you're most likely fine. 
Now, LaFortune does recommend updating Android phones on the consumer side if you can, and for developers, make sure to use Signature Scheme V.2 so that your application won't be tampered with in this way, and that is now available on newer Android operating systems. I recommend never downloading applications outside of the Google Play Store as well. Now another flaw was also discovered, but this one affects both iOS and Android applications with man-in-the-middle attacks. Researchers at the School of Computer Science at the University of Birmingham discovered and published a paper explaining how the flaw works. The man-in-the-middle attack affects major applications that carry sensitive information, including HSBC, NatWest, and Allied Irish Bank, plus VPN applications like TunnelBear, just to name a few. These applications use certificate pinning with SSL, which is a technology designed to verify that a website or an application is trusted by a specific specific publisher. If the certificate pinning is done incorrectly, like it was with these apps, that leaves the door wide open for man-in-the-middle attacks. The applications implemented cert pinning incorrectly when creating the TLS connection for secure transport of the data inside of those apps. These apps were not checking for hostname verification, which would show if they were connected to the trusted party, and as such, they were vulnerable to hacks as well. The attacker would need to be on the same Wi-Fi or spoofing a network that a target is connected to. They could then use DNS or ARP spoofing to redirect the traffic to go through the man-in-the-middle attack, thereby allowing the attacker to view the vulnerable data. All these applications have been updated to apply a fix. By now, you have probably heard about Uber being hacked last year, and 57 million drivers and riders altogether had names, email addresses, and more data stolen. Drivers had their driver licenses stolen, for example. But no social security numbers or credit card information was stolen, luckily. But news came to light last week that Uber had paid off a young man in Florida via their bug bounty program at $100,000 to keep it quiet and delete the data. The identity of the hacker is unknown, but reports detail that Uber did not feel threatened by the person and as such did not take him to court. He was paid through HackerOne, which is a company that hosts bug bounty programs for companies and processes those payments for responsibly disclosed vulnerabilities. He reportedly had to sign a non-disclosure agreement about the hack and Uber reports that they analyzed his computer for deletion of the data. Now, while much of this is a gray area, like we don't know if the deleted data is actually completely gone, we don't know who did it, and we don't know why Uber was so secretive about the hack, what we do know is that they are being hit and hit hard with several potential lawsuits by US states and regulators. But they also run the risk of violating FTC guidelines for not publicly disclosing security incidents within a reasonable time frame. They chose to be silent about it and quietly pay the money via a bug bounty program. But I should clarify, this is not a bug bounty. This was an illegal hack and a ransom, and Uber's unethical payout could set a dangerous precedent in many other companies. Since InfoSec leaders have come out expressing concern over their payout, some have said that it's a good thing. They were glad that they got the data deleted. But since we have no way of determining if the data is actually gone or if it still runs the potential of being released publicly, I'm on the side of Uber was an ethical train and I will continue to be so. I would love to hear your thoughts on this story below as well. Thank you again to all of the wonderful people out there who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. Patreon is changing their fee structure and as such, I'm going to be releasing an update on our Patreon page about how Threatwire is going to react to these changes going forward. Needless to say, I am a patron as well as a creator. I donate to a lot of my friends on Patreon, so I am seeing both sides of how this change will affect us. Not to mention I worked in the credit card industry, so I know how transactions and fees should work. So be on the lookout for an update on patreon.com slash threatwire with more information within the next day or so. For what it's worth though, the whole reason this show is made is because of our patrons, so you will continue to see all the behind the scenes extras that you would expect, no matter what on Patreon, and we will keep on showing off those fur babies because that's my favorite part of the show. I love those fur babies. They are super cute. 
So thank you again to helping us keep the show coming completely independent and ad-free. And of course, if you cannot donate, if you don't want anything to do with Patreon, I totally understand. You can hit that subscribe button or you can share this episode on your favorite social media page and you can totally support Hack5 as well on other means. With that, I am Shannon Morris and I will see you on the internet.